In the silence of a summer night, the female luna moth conducts a long-distance conversation. Its receiver at the head, its transmitter at the abdomen. The message travels not by sound, but by scent. An invisible signal called pheromone penetrating the night air for 20 miles in every direction. The message is one of need and identity, an invitation to mate, perceived only by a male of its kind. Having waited for direction, his journey begins. An all-night flight down a clearly marked path. Without this ability, such rare species would perish. Males and females unable to find one another across the great distances between. Anonymous in the night, their once in a lifetime courtship begins. Their missions now complete through this miracle of reunion. The last time we even thought about dancing together, I wound up drunk and disorderly. No, no, you were charming. <laughs> no, really. No. No, I'm glad with my papa. You had me fooled for a minute. I thought you were just another American lady executive. Self-made, independent, and over here. The insect and all the lower forms are dedicated to species survival. Survival comes through reproduction, reproduction through mating. For man, unless the setting is right, perfume is right, the music is sweet, and at least one partner feels loved by the other, the reproductive act might never occur. As biological mechanisms, you can see that this is not terribly efficient. Males and females of all other life forms are drawn together in the direct and singular interest of reproduction. We earlier demonstrated that the insect has only a semblance of heart. Let it now be known he has no soul. Free from the concept of romance, the act of procreation occurs as simply, naturally, and obliviously as eating. Neither does beauty play a part, for the only requisite between consenting adults is that they be of the same species. Between two jumping spiders, close relatives of the insect, a ritual of semaphore signals communicates identity and willingness to proceed. In a macabre parody of the norm, the male's sexual organ is located in a modified foreleg called the palp. The incredible feat of engineering called web building is done for two purposes. First, to catch a meal. Second, to catch a mate. Among the family of spiders, the female black widow is the greatest temptress of all. 
throbbing with obese sexuality. Her rhythmic movement upon the strands excites a lover one-tenth her size to cautiously come forth. Seeming to know that his life might well end in the attempt, he carefully considers before throwing caution to the wind. Never did a more gentle lover exist. For one false move, and the widow will live up to her name. Stroking her abdomen as a token gesture to foreplay, he hurries on with his business. Too close for retreat, he gives his fate to a more powerful urge. With a sexual organ extending from his palp, he unites in mindless ecstasy. Black Widow, the most exciting part of sex is to escape. Puncturing his head, she sucks his body dry. Another sacrifice to the continuation of the species. Ever notice how from a great height a society of human beings takes on the appearance of so many ants scurrying to and fro? If you have, it's a rather dull-witted observation because there's really no similarity whatsoever. Down there, everyone has his own name, his own identity, his own path, which more often than not seems to collide with everyone else. It's quite unique to human beings, this sense of individual purpose, this need to compete with all the rest. True, as individuals, it gives us strength. But as a species, it threatens our chances for survival. Think about it sometime. 